Clyde was a character. Aside from being famous, of course, for the discovery of Pluto, uh, he was very active in, in uh, public outreach type activities. He loved to talk, talk about Pluto in particular, but almost anything astronomical Clyde would talk about. Clyde Tombaugh was a very interesting man who made very interesting telescopes. Um, growing up during the Depression, he was really good at reusing things, such as if you look at the telescopes that are behind me, you'll notice that it's made of a orange juice can. A Minute Maid orange juice can is protecting the lens. He's got some farm implements on this next telescope. A dumbbell is being used to counterweight this telescope. And the one behind here is using a lot of scrap metal from um, probably his garage. And so when you look at his telescopes, you might not automatically recognize them as a telescope. You might think that's just some random thing some guy built in his garage. And he made all of his own tools the same way. He did not actually go out and buy a lot of um, high-priced equipment. He would always make things to suit what he needed. If we look back at the life of Kaitambo when he started doing astronomy, we see that he really started in the 1920s. And so let's go back to the 1920s and there's no NASA. There's no American space program. There's no Hubble telescope. Tomball was a self-taught kind of guy. He was working on a farm. He lived in Kansas. He was a farm boy. Clyde made very heavy use of repurposed agricultural implements, cream separators and pulleys and gears and cogs from old machinery. Uh, his telescopes look sometimes rather primitive, but the one thing about the telescopes that weren't primitive were the optics. Clyde was very, very fussy about the optical quality of the stuff, he, most of which he made himself. I think it, the reason why he built the telescopes the way that he did had a lot to do with how he grew up. Being born in 1906 and living through the Depression and when he was learning to do these things, he was a very self-reliant man and he didn't think that he needed to go out and have other people do things for him. And so when he, wa when he wanted to build a telescope, what he did was he went to the library and he went and found a book on how to build a telescope and he tried it. This was in 1929 around and he did not like how it turned out. So what did he do? Did he give up? No. What he did was, you know, it's like, you know what, I can do better. He set it aside and he tried it again and to see if he could make a better telescope the second time around. He had a great sense of perseverance, a um, great sense of self-reliance, and a lot of creativity. He was given the job of trying to find the elusive planet X. He made the discovery on February 18th, 1930s. He shouts out, I found it, here it is. Everybody was so excited to have an American discover this. And not only that, but his story of being self-taught, coming from the countryside, having this devotion really, for the American people, it really depicted the American dream of working hard and being devoted to your dreams. Clyde kept everything. He never threw away a piece of paper. And Clyde's office was stacked, almost literally floor to ceiling, with papers. Scientific, old scientific journals, uh, correspondence, at this giant old oak desk. And there was one occasion, uh, the fire marshal made one of his regular, irregular inspections and uh, looked at Clyde's office with all this flammable paper piled floor to ceiling. Could hardly move in there. Uh, There's just room for Clyde and a guest and all these stacks of paper. And uh, suggested that maybe we ought, to, we ought to do something about collecting this stuff and rearranging it or putting it somewhere else. So it was. As I said, Clyde was a very interesting fellow. Oh, Clyde Tombaugh was a very prolific astronomer. Um, he didn't stop and rest after finding Pluto. He went on to become a world-renowned astronomer. He found lots of comets. He found um, galaxies and superclusters. There were all sorts of things, and he never stopped looking in the sky. If you look up a list of everything that he discovered, it's a very long list. He was a very strong role model for people, somebody that a lot of people could connect to and feel like they can talk to. Even in our community today, we have a school named Dr. Clyde Tombaugh. And so there you have a whole facility that's showing you how he acts as a role model to encourage people to, you know, just because you don't have the money, just because you don't have the equipment, just because you don't have the education, doesn't mean you can't pursue something that you love. 
If people are interested in learning more about astronomy, here in Las Cruces we've got two great groups that do star parties every single month. And so they can contact the NMSU Astronomy Department and ask about their Friday viewings. They do it at the Tombaugh Observatory on NMSU campus. Or they can contact the ASLC, the Astronomy Society of Las Cruces. Both groups hold monthly star parties where they try to teach or expose the public to the wonders of astronomy and um, get them to look up at the night sky. So all they have to do is just get up, get out, and look up.